Hello everyone, I'm Navya and now I'm going to explain the spiral model which is a part of software development life cycle. Each software development process moves through several phases depending upon the requirements and the activities that are to be performed for the desired outputs. For this, there are several process models which help in systematic software development. We are now going to see the spiral model. The spiral model is an iterative process model. It was introduced by Bohm in 1986. Now we are going to see what is spiral model. The spiral model consists of many cycles of software development. It is an iterative process model which combines the features of the waterfall model and the prototyping model. This is advantageous for large, complex and expensive projects. It also guides and measures the need of risk management needs cycle. This is the diagram of the spiral model. It consists of five phases, namely the communication phase, planning, modeling, construction and deployment. The process starts from the communication phase and it goes like an iteration to all the other phases and then again reaches the deployment phase and then stops. If there are any other requirements mentioned by the customer, then the process starts all over again from the communication phase and then the process continues like a cycle till the end of the software development process. These are the five phases of the spiral model. Firstly, let's go with the communication phase. In the communication phase, the developer has to interact with the customer and has to gather all the requirements in detail so as to avoid any risks in later stages in the software development process and also to make sure that the final product is satisfactory for the customer. This is the crucial phase of the software development process. This phase may include noting down all the details and requirements specified by the customer and collecting the information in the form of questionnaires. Now, let's go with the second phase that is the planning phase. After the requirement gathering, the developer has to come up with a rough plan of software process. Analysis is done whether the software can be made to fulfill all the requirements of the user. Feasibility study is also done. Now, let's go on with the modeling phase. In the next step, total analysis done in the previous phases has to be made into a design. The design may be a logical design or a physical design. They may include logical diagrams, data flow diagrams, data dictionaries and in some cases pseudocodes. Now let's go with the construction phase. At this stage, the actual development of the software begins. The developer starts implementing the software design in terms of writing the program code and developing error-free executable programs efficiently. The crucial phase is the testing phase which is done at various levels in order to ensure that the software works efficiently. And the final phase is the deployment phase. The final documentation is done in this stage. Documentation is very much essential for any product so as to provide the information of how to operate the software and the details of how the whole process of software development is done. This ensures the safety and maintenance of the software in the future. After completing all these phases, if there are any other changes that are to be made, then the process continues all over again from the communication phase and then continues till the final desired software is ready. And finally, when the whole process ends, that is, when all the iterations of the spiral model are completed, then the software is deployed. Now, let's go with the advantages of the spiral model. The spiral model has high amount of risk analysis and because of this, 
avoidance of risk is enhanced that is risk can be avoided as i mentioned earlier this model is good for large and mission critical projects we also have strong approval and documentation control finally additional functionality can be added at a later date that means if we have any other requirements that have to be added into the project then they can be added in the later iterations of the process now let's see the disadvantages that come with spiral model the spiral model can be a costly model to use because of many cycles of development risk analysis requires highly specific expertise the project success is highly dependent on the risk analysis phase the spiral model doesn't work well for smaller projects now let's see when to use the spiral model the spiral model can be used when cost and risk evaluation is more important it can be used for medium to high risk projects long term project commitment is unwise because of potential changes to economic priorities that means as the iterations go on the cost of the project also increases this can be used when users are unsure of their needs that means if any other requirements are to be added additionally they can be added in later stages of the iterative process this model can be used when requirements are complex and also when significant changes are expected which is mainly seen in research and exploration this is all about the spiral model and thank you very much for watching my video